a word of warning this is the long version of this video for the blue buzzing relay fix i have a shorter version on this youtube channel called isuzu trooper stuff go and have a look for that one if you haven't got 20 minutes because this is how long this one is the other one's six minutes and gets to the point much quicker anyway go watch it cheers see ya if you've arrived here on this youtube video it's because your blue relay is buzzing bastard thing anyway if you're like me, you've gone out and brought yourself a brand spanking new alternator and stuck it in your truck, all excited, and you go to turn it on and you end up hearing this. What's causing that buzzing, buzzing? In your pants. What a dog. I knew I should have brought a Toyota or a Nissan. Never mind, keep on battling away. But the good news is, it doesn't do it all the time. It only does it when you turn the key on just before you start. But once the vehicle's running, it doesn't buzz. Sounds like a mains transformer station or a major power generator. Shouldn't sound like that. But anyway, if you've arrived here, it's because it's doing this. And I've got three options for you to fix it, ignore it, and the third one, I can't even remember what that is. Anyway, we'll go have a look at some bits of paper, bore the hell out of you for a couple of minutes explaining why it's happening, and then we'll look at the fixes. So we should really start with what's in this relay. Well, there's nothing fancy. And to demonstrate, I've pulled apart a very similar one just to give you an idea of the concept of what's in it. But if we start, we've got a little circuit diagram here. So this relay has a coil in it, and this is the coil part here. And what happens is when you put power across pin 1 and pin 2, 12 volts to ground, you will energise the coil and it pulls down this little metal part. And basically... That's the switch mechanism in there between normally open and normally closed, and they are the outputs on the switch. So when it's energised, it will go down to normally closed and allow power to come in here and out here. And when it's in an open state or only energised, it's normally open, so the power will flow between pin 3 and pin 4. And that is the state which this relay is used the majority of the time in operation. So it's nothing more than just a simple basic relay, it's just blue. Now the reason the relay is buzzing, it's because your new alternator, this is the old one, on pin, on the plug here, on the new alternator, not this old one, but there's your L connector and S connector. S is for signal. So pretend this is your alternator. S is for signal and that's supplied with 12 volts. So the alternator knows the charge status of the battery. And that's 12 volts on there all the time regardless if the keys are on or off. Second one is L and that's for light. And that indicates when something goes wrong there's a dash, a light on your dash. So when your alternator is not running, the keys are on but the engine's not going, the light will be on. It indicates a fault. And that's done by feeding power from the battery through your starter switch which you've got on comes along goes through the light through a little diode and down to the alternator which grounds the signal when something goes wrong now that's how it works in your average vehicle because most vehicles don't have relays like this but they do have a dash light and what I mean by most vehicles don't have a relay this relay has been replaced by a computer on most vehicles and we have a new alternator which effectively we've dropped into this vehicle which is designed for a computer so its output is a bit noisy or its grounding to turn on the light is via the L pin it's actually grounding the signal and its pulse width modulation and I've measured it and it's about 135 Hertz it's working away at so it's turning off and on off and on off and on real quick and 135 hertz is a frequency that can be heard by the human ear. So when you have that much or that frequency grounding on and off, 
turning on and off super fast. It's actually holding it shut, but it's just momentary lifting it just a tiny little bit. And that is doing that 135 times a second. So hence you hear a noise. Now these relays are like speakers. So if we have a look at a the speaker, there is a coil in the back and that coil is attached to a cone. So when this energy goes in through these two wires, just like in our coil, this guy here, it moves this little plate down. Well, your speaker moves the cone up and down. So effectively, because we've got this pulse width modulation grounding on our alternator, on the new ones, you end up turning your little relay into a speaker and it buzzes away. But that brings us back to the purpose of this relay. If you take this relay out, it does not stop your car battery from charging, but it does stop the heater blower and the air conditioning from working. So basically it's controlling the air conditioning and the heater blower, the fan, from working while you're starting because you don't want those using extra power that could be used for starting your vehicle. Like I said, if you pull it out, you're not going to have any air conditioning or your heater fan blower working. So let's have a look at a circuit diagram and try and understand what the hell's going on because it's taken me about four hours to figure out this sucker and it's very frustrating. So, this is your blue relay. This is your dash red battery light which turns on when you something wrong with the alternator or you're about to start the vehicle. And this light turns out once it's running. So, even though this buzzes, when you first go to start the vehicle, it has no effect on uh, degradation of performance of your vehicle. That's fine. You can option one, do nothing, just leave it. It'll just buzz when you turn it on, but everything will perform as normal once it's running and the buzzing will go away. So if you have a look at option one, do nothing, we'll understand what's actually happening. So 12 volts from your battery goes through your ignition key. You turn it on, it shuts, it flows along here, comes to the dash light, it illuminates, there's a diode to stop power going backwards, which we don't have to worry about at the moment, and then it runs down here to ground on the L signal on your alternator, one of these pins. So one of those pins grounds that to the chassis, which makes this illuminate. When your vehicle starts, it basically disconnects the L or the lamp ground and breaks circuit and the light turns off. At the same time, it also turns off this blue relay, so it stops buzzing. Now when you're about to start your vehicle and the switch closes and the power comes along, goes through the relay through here, down to ground, the relay engages or shuts, as I said, and starts to make the buzzing noise. And the reason it does this, the reason we have this, is because this relay is designed to turn off your heater fan and air conditioning clutch because it uses unnecessary extra power. But once it's running, it flips the relay out because it's got no power to it because it's in the normally open position and energizes or allows those circuits to work. So that is a rough explanation. Might be a bit of a mind bender, but it's pretty much what it is. So what we'll do now is we'll go out to the truck and I'll demonstrate to you what happens when I pull this relay out and we manually jumper between these two points and you'll see the heater or hear the heater fan turn on and the accessory clutch you'll actually see that engage. So we'll turn this round to the on position. If we have a look in our little fuse box here where the blue relay hides, I've actually got the relay pulled out and if we momentarily plug it in it's all going to go ballistic. So you can hear it buzzing. Now if we jumper between a couple of pins here, so this pin here and this pin here, this is what happens. Just give me a minute, I'll go turn on the heater blower inside. Right, so I've gone and turned on the heater blower and the air conditioning. So first thing, when I jumper these, you're going to hear the fan turn on and the second click was the air compressor clutch engaging clutch out 
clutch in. And that's happening when we jumper those two points. So this is what is happening during the start, starting of your vehicle. When you turn the key on, this relay disconnects this, because this is normally a closed circuit. And by disconnecting it, it allows extra power to go to your starter motor and glow plugs where it's needed the most. So I'm hearing you all go, well, why don't you just jumper these two pins? Well, you can, but if you live in a cold climate, or you leave your keys on, it's going to waste the battery pretty quick. So this is a fail-safe plan to actually protect your battery from running flat when the key is on and it allows for easy, easier starting. So it would be nice to keep this and have it not buzz. So as I said, the first option is just put up with the buzzing. But one of the downsides is, is the battery light, while it may seem quite bright at the moment, it's actually really quite dim compared to what it should be and on a bright day you won't notice it so if we turn on the flashlight you'll notice that it becomes quite dim compared to the rest and on a sunny day you don't see it so you don't know you've got a problem that's one of the downsides and the second downside of option one doing nothing is you have to live with this buzzing option two is you can add a capacitor wedge an electrolytic capacitor between the positive and the negative terminals on your blue relay and that will make it quiet and the reason it's noisy is because the new alternator the L pin on it which this relay works through is uh, like a pulse width modulation ground and it runs at about 135 hertz and it creates noise because it's turning off and on very fast and it makes this relay chatter or turns the relay into a speaker and that's the noise you can hear. So with this fix all we're doing is, and I'll pull it out so you can see, what's, see what the hell's going on, electrolytic capacitor, that top pin there is the positive, that bottom pin is the negative, quite important because with an electrolytic capacitor they are polarity sensitive. If you get them around the wrong way, they tend to explode and smell like fish. So that's all you need, one of those couple of legs. The value doesn't have to be exactly this, this is a 470 microfarad, 35 volt. Use a reasonably high voltage one. Um, and all you're doing is putting it between the two pins positive and the negative and what it does is it takes out that pulse width modulation noise by smoothing the current, smoothing the voltage. So if we wedge that in there like that and it's just wedged in between the pins and basically going between these two pins on here, those two, same position and we're looking in from the side of the vehicle so I'm standing on the driver's side looking at the fuse box and we wedge our relay in capacitor sitting in place if I go turn it on it'll be quiet so I'll turn the key on round to the run position and you shouldn't hear anything apart from a few clicks see nice and quiet now what we'll do Turn that off and I'll come back and I'll take out this capacitor and you'll see the difference in the noise. So capacitor's out and put the relay back in without it. We'll leave that sitting there. Hopefully that's not shorting out across anything. Bad idea, we'll put that somewhere else. And we'll turn on the ignition. And that is the difference. All you need is one of those. And that'll quieten everything down for you. Anyway, that's option two. So that's option two. Now option three uses one of these and an extra relay. And the reason we use the extra relay is to solve the dash warning light, charge warning light, dimness issue. Because we are pulling too much current 
through the grounding on the L or the lamp uh, lead on the side of the alternator to operate the relay properly and you give full brightness on the dash lights. And option three, third and final one, which is the most complicated, but is a solution that I'll go with because it will give me, as I stated before, a full brightness on my warning lamp and it will stop the buzzing as well. So what do we do? Well, this is the blue relay. We have to add an extra relay and the capacitor will be used as well. So what we do is this is the existing circuit diagram. Well, we cut the wire down here, so the signal that runs from the alternator up to the blue relay, which is, and I'll show you that on the vehicle now. So down next to your battery, there is a big plug down here with two big leads on it. They are the main charge leads from your alternator, but above it is a smaller one. And this has a white wire with a blue stripe on it and that wire comes from your alternator and that is the lamp signal wire or the lamp wire so it's coming from the alternator down here into here this plug and through to up to here to the blue relay so what you do is you basically cut the cable as it comes into this plug and add an extender wire that heads away and another wire which heads away there so you're intercepting this this wire and taking the two wires up to here and these are the two wires that we will use in our circuit diagram inside and I'll show you that now so now that I've shown you where to intercept it is this point here so that little plug I showed you is that point there coming back from the alternator and we've cut that and we add, and I'll bring in this next circuit diagram, I'll line that up there, option three. So we've cut the wire and we've added an extra wire and another one up here. And they are the two white wires you can see. We've also added an extra relay, which is this guy here and these two contacts. So we're adding one of these guys. And so what happens is when you turn on your ignition, it, all the power now comes down through here, along here, and it energizes this relay, which is this black relay. Now this black relay has the capacitor across it, which is this guy here. And this relay is energized because it's been grounded by the L or the lamp wire on the alternator because the engine's not running yet. And what it does is it shuts this connection here and because we've cut the wires it will allow full current to flow down here and through here and we've ground we ground the pin one of the pin outs on this relay to ground and what that does is allow full current to be drawn through here and gives you a bright bulb on your dash where before, without adding in this extra relay here, it could not allow this to put the LED, sorry, the dash light to burn brightly because it was being limited down here by the pulse width modulation of this ground point on your lamp signal on your alternator. I need to make a change here to make this a little bit more understandable. So this is everything in here is part of the relay, the black relay. And I've added in dash lamp so you know that that is the red warning lamp on the dash. Okay, so if you can get your head around that with option three, with adding on this extra relay in here, you're doing really bloody good because this isn't easy stuff to get your head around, especially the way I've drawn it. It's taken me a few hours to figure it out looking at the uh, Isuzu circuit diagrams, but this works because I have tried it with all those wires and stuff laying around in the vehicle. I just haven't fully wired it properly for a final installation. So basically with option three, all we're doing is cutting this signal back to the alternator 
and we're giving it a better ground and that allows full current to flow through giving you a bright dash light all the way down through here to ground and it allows full current to flow through this relay and it's a nice clean 12 volt signal it's not pulse width modulated from the alternator back down through ground and we use this relay here which is this guy here and the cap to actually clean it up because it still buzzes a little bit um, to act as a switch to control this so you don't have to muck around so that's pretty much the end of the video and if you managed to get through that congratulations and this is just part of the trials and tribulations of owning an Izuzu good luck we might see you floating around